The Pied yeah. Piper preferred pentagons. The Pied Piper preferred pentagons. And hello, everyone. Welcome to episode two of season two of Road Chosen Stuff. I'm your host, Doug McLean, here with my uh, partner in crime, Frank Mancina. Frank, say hello to all of our millions of fans. Oh, hey, hey, everyone. <laughs> What's up, Doug? How are you? Hey, family. <laughs> Thanks for listening again this week. <laughs> hey, family and friends. <laughs> no, no, a little bit of humor. Uh, special shout out this week to our South American fans. Mm -hmm. A lot of great feedback. Um, Getting traction down there. A lot of traction. A lot of traction. 30,000 foot view, South America, <laughs> provided this week. We're going to drop in some marketing terms here and there. Anywho. We don't, we don't want to lose everyone. <laughs> Frank, really exciting episode today. Really exciting. Um, uh, really important episode, but I forgot what it is. What are we talking about today? So, you know, we had a lot of uh, some great response from our initial healthcare tours episode. I forget which episode it was in season one. We kind of brushed on a lot of different topics within the healthcare um, episode. So this yeah. time around, we're going to talk about B2B demo sales within the Love healthcare it. field. So within uh, the a little bit more specifically. Exactly. So a little bit more focused. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can do what you can do training, you can do uh post-sale support. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just strict demo device. promotion. Yeah. Or sales. Device. Uh, so this is directly uh, medical device sales. Yeah. Okay. All right. Which so, is well directly medical device sales. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly right. So as a as a as an alternative to you know selling at a particular trade show, for example. Sure. Right? So yeah. this is more so you know going to the customer's back door, which are all but non-existent nowadays, Front especially door. now with the uptick of the uh, what did Gino call it? The uh, Delta Comfort. The Delta variant. Comfort Plus. You've been upgraded to the new variant of COVID, <laughs> the Delta Plus. Uh, yeah, so as we know, trade shows now, again, second wave are starting to be uh, canceled, shut down, rescheduled, what have you. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is even more appropriate, I think, <clears throat> given the I agree. current social climate. Uh, how is this advantageous? Let's talk yeah, about so, that. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's advantageous. I kind of brushed on it in the intro here um although i did say back door but it's actually front door so it, it's one of the main the main uh, one of the main points or or um yeah probably one of the main points i would like people to understand is that you're bringing your product directly to the front door yes. of your potential clients yeah right so you know, as opposed to, you know, having, you know, one or two trade shows a year and you have the ability to have, you know, the people in your booth, you could have them in your trailer um, at their convenience, right? So yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the kicker right there, right? You have the flexibility with a tour, you know, with a road show to, to be there at any time, any day, any, yeah. you know, any time of day, right? So yeah. that's um, one, of, one of the big advantages. I, the biggest a, a word I think is convenience, right? And yeah. adaptability, you just touched on that too. Like if you can't hit a particular client, particular state or location, you can swing by your own wheels, right? So it doesn't exactly. really matter. I mean, you can schedule something for the next day, the next week, depending on where you are. And it's all about the convenience. They don't have to get on a plane. They don't have to travel. They don't have to check into a hotel in some city, go to a trade show during set hours. The salesperson, depending on what region they're in, will schedule the demo and they'll bring that mm -hmm. person out whenever they have time, whether it's their lunch hour, before work, after work. They come out to a completely immersive experience and they can be demoed to directly. And the advantage with that too, your interface are the actual products. You can yep. walk them through a showroom where you now have control of the sales situation. They're fully immersed in your branding, your product line. You can show them different variations. You can do software demos, hardware demos. I mean, whatever you'd like to do. You're not walking into the lobby, not going up to their office. You're not mm -hmm. surrendering control of the situation to your customer. It's the other way around. You're not pulling out your laptop, your tablet, and showing a PowerPoint presentation. That's what I always say. They're interacting yeah, with the product one on one, and it and you're, again, and you're seeing, well, it's not a and you're seeing more, and you're seeing more and more of this happening, right? I think sure. uh, groups are starting to catch on. 
mm-hmm. you know, this past week I was in, um, in Chicago, which is just, um, just south of, um, I think, uh, <laughs> Minneapolis. <laughs> it is technically. It is. Isn't it? Southeast. <laughs> <laughs> so no no and uh we're at i was at i was at an event um and there was two of our trailers there at the same time and we just and yeah. one of them was for a demo was uh was a medical device company a uh, company that we that we work with sure demoing at a, at a central location right uh mm-hmm. i think i think you see more and more of that because of the convenience and you know because you can't travel. A lot of people just can't travel right now, right? Sure. Or they're restricted to travel. Generally so. speaking, and, um, you know, because of government enacted mandates uh, saying that larger medical companies uh, can no longer pay for transportation, lodging, um, you know, for mm-hmm. their customers or clients to come out and look at their products. So you kind of bypass all of that legally uh, by going directly to them, you know, where they are. Uh, and it- I think, uh, you know, depending on what you're, I guess, selling, uh, there's, you have the ability to have multiple different, you know, vehicles, right? So, oh, sure. for <laughs> instance, you know, we have the tour with, with Hyperfine, which mm-hmm. has um, the world's first portable MRI machine, right? And yeah. to really capture, you know, the entire, uh, you know, North America, they have two different... <laughs> two different vehicles, right? One that sure. does the East coast and one that does the West coast. Yeah. Right. And, and they're just meeting, 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 yeah. meeting right. And, and just showcasing um, the newest and latest and greatest technology that they have. Right. Yeah. As opposed to having one extra large format vehicle that would crisscross the entire country, you could have maybe two smaller units that can hit twice as many locations on the same amount of time. Yeah. Whether it be coastal or regional or what have you. A lot mm-hmm. of our, a lot of our healthcare uh, clients have done that, and they've seen the advantage of that. Um, especially if they'd like to hit specific trade shows uh, that may be close in timing or dates to one another that are in other parts of the country that wouldn't be possible logistically. They just hit them with their respective, uh, respective vehicles. Mm-hmm. Frank, what you're doing here is you're cutting through the clutter. That's right. That's okay. right. What does that mean? I, I well, you know, know everyone. <laughs> Everyone gets a lot of ads. Everyone sees oh, a lot sure. of different TV shows. Yeah, and there's a lot yeah. of commercials. Pretty much, you know. Even you, even you, you see a ton of you see a ton of ads every day, right? Yeah, sure. But, but when you're fully immersed, it's it's more of an authentic experience, right? Absolutely. I've even said trade shows are kind of a roll of the dice, right? It's whoever's registered, whoever happens to be there, and whoever happens to be walking past your booth that wants to engage you. Uh, that's mm-hmm. not always a guarantee. I mean, they're still incredibly effective. They'll be a, they'll be around for the rest of our lives, mm-hmm. uh, certainly. But yeah, as opposed to a, something that's more targeted and more focused, you know, you do you cut through the clutter with these by going directly. Yeah, exactly. And, and and just think about just how it's how do we just how we describe it? It's a mobile experiential. Yeah. you know, atmosphere, right? So you're experiencing sure. this, this new atmosphere, you're fully immersed in, in, you know, in the trailer, right? And plus, it provides consistency for a lot of the, a lot of the sales teams, right? So sure, you know, that you're having a consistent message um, throughout, you know, yeah. your, your experience and throughout uh, the different locations, right? Yeah, it's, it's the same experience for every, for every customer that you're bringing the, uh, you're bringing the vehicle to. Um, what else do we want to touch on here, Frank? A lot of things, um, a lot of things we can talk a lot about. Of things, yeah. We talked about adaptability, flexibility, being able to take it where you want, when you want. Um, you can always rebrand and reconfigure, uh, responding directly to marketing demands. If you find that, uh, one particular product isn't doing well, you can just simply upgrade your experience, swap it out for another one. Um, maybe add different types of equipment for different markets. Yeah, and, and I think you kind of t- you kind of touched on it earlier in terms of like having the ability to train. You Thank know, you. On that, you know, say for example, you sold, you know, everything that you had, and, and now you have to yeah. do retraining on this particular, you sure. know, this particular product, mm-hmm. right? You can you can adjust you you can adapt the interior of of the trailers to kind of help um, and, and provide training on site yeah. um, with um, your clients too. So sure. So Frank, if people want some more information on this, where can they go? 
Um, we, a little place called www.gomra.com. Oh, powerful. So website. we do have a healthcare section on there. We and, do. Uh, as, as well, we have a great blog section for more information on, mm-hmm. uh, on, all, on all types of tours, but uh, most notably our, our, our medical tours as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, Doug, you can attest to this. We've seen a major uptick in these types of tours over the past year. Oh, yeah. Uh, so um, we don't see it uh, slowing down anytime soon. So no, no. Um, I think it's just more so just educating people on the ability to or, or the option, I guess, yeah. to, to, to do this. To uh, cut through the clutter. Uh, Arby's the clutter. curly fries. Arby's curly <laughs> fries. Mm. Let's put them up. Let's put them up, Emily. Doug, Doug sent me there a photo are. of Arby's curly fly with the, the chips. Arby's curly oh, fly yeah, chips. Oh, no, yeah, a bag of frozen fries you can buy now. Oh, those are frozen at grocery stores. Oh. Yes, it's a bag of frozen fries. You just like sprinkle them out on your pan and mm. 20 minutes at 350, and you are in heaven. <laughs> You're at Arby's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every person's dream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so don't know how that happened. Frank, uh, another great episode. I don't another think we're done episode. yet. Do we have a stuff? Do we have a I stuff? I think we have a stuff section today. All right. This is what are you going to come prepared or are you just? No, no, uh, we're completely prepared. We are completely prepared <laughs> for today's topic. Okay. What is it then? It is um, when, you, when you go <laughs> to the zoo, it has to be zoo related. So what is okay. your favorite zoo animal? And why? And don't take the easy ones. Don't say the lion and the gorilla. Come on. <laughs> okay, so I was, I was at a zoo recently. Not recently, probably within the last... Virtual eight, or eight real? No, it was real. It was real. Okay. So... I go to a lot of virtual I was zoos, like I amazed by this one animal. And I've never seen one in person. And uh, it was the anteater. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, they're crazy this looking. This anteater's nose was like this big. And oh for sure but it came around near us and it was just just yeah they're crazy oh i'm like oh my god it's like a it's like she's got a shot back in front of me <laughs> as a nose <laughs> could you imagine seeing one of those in the wild would you not like instantly freak out oh 100 or like if you're sleeping in a sleeping bag but, and that, but I, that I, I didn't realize how big they were too oh massive they're like massive. huge i'm like yeah holy so, Wouldn't that be crazy if that night after he met you, he went and told all his anteater friends about this human he met that day? <laughs> yeah, named Frank Mancina. This guy. Yeah, yeah. So how do they do? They feed? Do they bring in like a bucket of ants? How do you? What do you feed an anteater? I honestly, I, I I didn't see anything that um, would resemble like a food tray or anything like that. Yeah, but yeah. He, sure. he had a big, he had a pretty big area, and he was just yeah, just sucking around man just that's a solid area. choice hey, that's anteater is a solid choice and you know ironically that is my choice as well it's the exact <laughs> thing i had it written i even have it written on a piece of paper here to prove it and i've lost it so i'm just gonna take my word for it that anteater no, is Doug, what is what would it be though you know what are shocking to me uh and sometimes terrifying are penguins because you mm-hmm. see penguins you just assume they're like you know what six eight inches tall yeah, they're like 11, 12 feet tall, which I never realized before. Are and they really? No, they're like no, they're eight not. feet tall. <laughs> and like four feet tall. Can you imagine <laughs> they're 12 feet? They would easily have already taken over the world. This like a true. violent, hostile <laughs> penguin takeover. Uh, no, but they're massive. They are. They're like three or four feet tall. They're so much larger than you think. You see my Nat Geo stuff like that on yeah, History Channel or whatever else. Good point. Yeah, I just think they're these little innocent creatures. But they, if you were ever like out in the Arctic alone, and you yeah. gotta fend for yourself. You don't have. You don't have stand. You don't stand. Oh, that's a true. Just, they have like talon. Like what's what is that? What's happening there? They have it like claws. only the flying flying penguins have talons. I think I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, penguins don't fly. Okay. Yeah. Our engineer just confirmed penguins don't fly, so that uh, they do not have talons. <laughs> but uh, anyway, anyway, Frank. Uh, okay. Another amazing stuff. So that's it for this week. Um, yeah. Are just, we back uh, next week? Big... Do we have another episode next week? We do, we do. Okay. Uh, before I get into that, but I just yes. want to say thank you to um, oh. all our listeners um, and follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, yes, YouTube. Thank you. And, and I believe um, next week we're dressing as our uh, favorite historical figures. 
We are, we are. Okay. I'm going to be, um, I'm not sure who I'm going to be yet, but. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be, uh, yeah, I don't know either. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> don't turn balls here, Dougie. <laughs> uh, Emily, no, can we throw up a historical figure? Okay, thank you. A good one, a good one. Um, <laughs> no, we're, uh, we're going to be talking about tour operators. Oh, right? that's right, so, our drivers. Our yeah. drivers, so. Yeah, the people, the husbands, the wives, the men and women who uh, live out on the road with the tour. And whose responsibility it is to make sure everything goes off without a hitch. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of responsibility when you think it about is. it. It's crazy. And uh, who we look for, how we find them. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty exciting. Here. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty exciting episode. You know. We, yeah, for uh, sure. For Doug sure. Doug and I have both worked with a ton of great tour operators, and uh, we have, and some not and, so great. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, but, not, um, but not for the most, companies. luckily, for the most, uh, everyone's been fantastic. So, yeah, looking no, forward to the for next sure. next week's episode. So. All right. Well, with that awesome. being said, uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you, everyone. And uh, tune in next time for the next episode. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.